Organizations today are looking for ways to streamline the migration of existing applications to Kubernetes. In this video, we're going to look at a couple offerings from Google Cloud that can drastically reduce the complexity around getting existing workloads running in Kubernetes. Migrate for GKE and GKE Autopilot. Let's start with a brief overview of GKE Autopilot. Kubernetes is extremely powerful, but can be a challenge to set up and manage by yourself. Provisioning and managing resources, security and network configuration, and scaling can all be challenging. To help alleviate some of these issues, Google Cloud has long offered Google Kubernetes Engine as a managed service. By using GKE in standard mode, customers still provision and manage the underlying infrastructure, but the vast majority of the configuration is handled by Google. This is a great solution solution for customers who still want to maintain a degree of control, for example, if they want to use GPU instances. However, for customers who want to run mainstream workloads and don't want to worry about configuring infrastructure, Google Cloud recently introduced GKE Autopilot. With Autopilot mode clusters, customers don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure at all. Google Cloud essentially becomes your site reliability engineer, scaling the cluster up and down as needed. You simply choose which workloads need to run there, and Google Cloud does a bunch of the heavy lifting for you. GKE Autopilot provides several key benefits to customers. First, optimize production like a Kubernetes expert. Google creates clusters according to battle-tested and hardened best practices that yield optimized configuration and security posture ready for production, helping you reduce GKE learning curve and get to production faster. Strong security posture. Google takes full responsibility for nodes and infrastructure security, eliminating infrastructure security management tasks. Reduce day two operations. Google monitors the entire autopilot cluster, control plane, worker nodes, and core Kubernetes system components, ensuring your pods are always scheduled. Improve resource efficiency. Google takes full responsibility for optimizing your resource consumption. You pay only for the pods, not for the nodes. So you have an easy way to run Kubernetes with GKE Autopilot. How can you easily get existing workloads onto those clusters? For those of you not familiar with Migrate for GKE, this solution can be a really useful tool in your app modernization tool set to accelerate and simplify your enterprise's application modernization journey to GKE. You have the option to use Migrate for GKE as is to accelerate your end customer modernization or build your proprietary automations on top of the product to increase productivity of your modernization projects. Either way, it can drastically reduce the time it takes to move workloads from VMs into containers. When looking at migrating an existing workload, there are four discrete steps that you'll want to go through. First is discovery and assessment. Migrate has a fit assessment tool that can be used to help identify what workloads you have running and which are the best candidate for migration. Look into the fit assessment tool video for more information. Next is setup and planning. Migrated workloads can run on GKE in standard or autopilot mode, as well as on Anthos and even Cloud Run. Additionally, you can orchestrate migration pipelines to help automate the migration process. In this video, we're focused on the third phase, so I won't spend a lot of time here. The final phase deals with how you manage applications after they have been migrated. Because Migrate for GKE provides you with the resulting Docker file, you can easily manage updates to your code via your standard deployment pipelines. Drilling down a bit into the steps associated with that third phase, and what you'll see in the upcoming demo, is the general Migrate for GKE workflow when it comes to an actual migration. First, we're going to create a GKE autopilot cluster. Then we're going to provide Migrate for GKE a source VM. The migration processes will inspect the VM and then generate a migration plan that we can edit as needed. From there, it will generate the deployment artifacts, including a Docker container. We'll then deploy that container onto our autopilot cluster. With that, let's jump into our demo. We'll start the demo by building out our autopilot cluster. Notice that all I need to do is provide a name for the cluster and the region in which it's going to run. And now that our cluster is up and running, we can move on to deploying our sample application. OK, so let's deploy the Kubernetes YAML. And notice that's creating a bunch of services. And while they're created, Autopilot is increasing the resource requirements automatically for us to address those new services. Now that that's run, let's check our pods. They're still in pending. Let's check them again here a little bit later. And everything is up and running. So we can test the service now. I'm going to get the front end service IP address. I'm going to navigate into my web browser. And you can see here the application is running. Let me go in. I'm going to buy an item. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and check out, and you see everything working exactly as you would expect it to. The way the application works is every service, except for the payment service, is running in Kubernetes. The payment service is in a VM, and that's what we're gonna migrate. But first, we need to stop that VM so we can migrate it. So let's do that now. To perform the actual migration, I switched over to Migrate for Containers, and I'm gonna click Create Migration. I'll give my migration a name. I'll select a source that I created earlier. It's a Linux VM. We'll give it that VM name, and we're gonna migrate the image. With that, I'll click Create Migration, and this will go off. It'll take a little bit of time, so I'll speed up the video, and I'll rejoin you when it's finished. Our migration is completed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna review and edit the migration plan that was generated. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna come in and make a change to this V2K service manager variable and set that to true. That lets, allows us to use the enhanced runtime to run on GKE Autopilot. And we're gonna change the name of the image from payment service VM to payment service and the same thing for the Kubernetes service since it's no longer running in a VM. We'll generate our artifacts. That takes a while, so let me speed up the video here and I'll rejoin you when it's complete. So this process is almost wrapped up. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look after it finishes at the artifacts that were generated. You can see we have a couple of Docker images as well as the Docker file and some other artifacts. I'm gonna go ahead and download those into Cloud Shell. So I'll get artifacts from my migration. If I look in the directory, you can see those uh, artifacts that I mentioned previously. Let's go ahead and apply the deployment spec that was generated. This is going to deploy our new payment service. So we'll do a kubectl apply minus f deployment spec. That's creating the new service and the new deployment uh, in Kubernetes. Clear the screen and let's check and see the status of those pods. This might take a, a few seconds. All right, let's just wait for those to come up and we'll speed up the video. All right, now that that has, is up and running, that new service, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our app to see if it actually is all working again. So we'll buy this camera, add to cart, place order, and everything is working exactly as expected. We have migrated the payment service from the VM into the container. I hope that demo showed you how easy it can be to not only deploy a GKE autopilot cluster, but also how simple it can be to migrate an existing VM-based workload to Kubernetes. For more detailed information, check out our documentation as well as the other videos in our Migrate series. And don't forget to like and subscribe to be alerted whenever we publish new content.